welcome back everyone it's me Matt thank you so much for joining me today we're talking about the f-35 specifically British f-35s aboard the beautiful Queen Elizabeth aircraft carrier of course bless her heart she has sadly passed away but we are talking about the aircraft that is on board of this beautiful new steady-art warship now the f-35 is a very strange aircraft in the world of military aviation because it's given two sides and there's no in between I would find it's either you love it or you hate it and people will find any excuse they can to blow the f-35 out of the water so to speak and in this particular video we're actually talking about being blown into the water yes this is not news it's not information that's been uh, just come out this is a long time ago this happened now. I think it was sort of November of 2021 so it's like a year ago and I've been asked many times to talk about this scenario and what actually happened with the f-35 that came off the queen elizabeth aircraft carrier and crashed into the mediterranean while taking off uh, because of the simplest of things and when people talk about f-35s having issues um, look i work in the aviation industry and uh, i can tell you this much these things are the engineering that goes into these aircraft is is incredible but they also are just like anything human operated and human operated creates problems with things like human factors. Human factors is things like complacency, um, you know, uh, the norms, um, things like that that people take for granted in their day to day operations. As you can see on this aircraft carrier, we've got the flight crew operating on the deck doing their particular roles, tasks, responsibilities. And it's a very busy lifestyle on an aircraft carrier. I know people who operate in these roles uh, in the Royal Navy and in the U.S. Uh, military, in the uh, U the U.S. Navy, and it's a busy lifestyle. Now, in this particular scenario, in the footage you're seeing here, the crew are testing uh, the first few flights that are coming off the Queen Elizabeth. But in the scenario we're talking about, the 100 million pound jet crashed actually because of a rain cover. Yes, it was literally because of one tiny little thing and, and i wouldn't say tiny but very critical thing that allowed it to not be able to get enough thrust and power to take off properly now officials believe the rain cover was sucked into the f-35b lightning II stealth plane engine as it took off from the aircraft carrier forcing the pilot to eject if we look at this footage right here you can see there is nowhere near enough thrust to get this aircraft off the deck and the reason I'm talking about this is not to uh, rehash up old news, it's to reinforce to those that keep bashing the F-35 uh, that it's not always what you think it may be. A lot of people have said, oh, it's the engine that blew up. It was it was a failure of, you know, the pilot or, or uh, you know, the aircraft's not designed properly for the sea. I've heard so many stories and speculations and people on my channel whenever I talk about the F-35 mentioning this scenario and I thought it'd be nice to just reinforce and put it to bed so that you as my community can be somewhat understanding that this is a human factors error that is performed actually via the flight crew not the aircraft itself and as you can see these crew members that are walking the deck right now are doing what's called a FOD walk or foreign object debris walk which they do just about every day to ensure there is no debris left on the flight deck because on a flight deck you are literally having anything and I mean anything being ingested into those turbines and it takes very little to create uh, an impact that thrust so they do this checks all the time but this check is done however the flight crew did not remove the rain cover from the intake of the jet engine and therefore it was ingested stalling out the compressor and the turbines and completely giving zero thrust for it to take off and a lot of people have tried saying that the aircraft carrier that um, was operating it and the crew that were operating of that particular flight were you know terrible people it could have killed the pilot it was really really bad and of course yes they realize that it's not a good thing they also realized almost right away that removing the cover had not been done and uh, it's very it's incredibly strict process as i said i work in the aviation industry it's pretty serious stuff and the ground crew do whatever they can to ensure that when they do the pilot walk around everything is checked and verified but it just comes to basic human error they're gigantic beard big red covers um but there was this one from what i've been told is was actually seated a little deeper into the engine and after the pilot ejected, um, he was actually reported left dangling from the edge of HMS Queen Elizabeth because the lines of his parachute actually became caught on the edge of the flight deck. Um, only minor injuries, thank goodness. And it's understood that uh, he was rescued very quickly by the team. 
but doesn't it just kind of give you a bit of a wake-up call for those of you who may be operating in the military in some form or even just your normal day-to-day -day careers that just one little thing can create huge detrimental effects to an aircraft that can reach 1.5 to 1.6 Mach uh, or 1,270 miles per hour, but it's been completely grounded and taken out of action because of a tiny little aircraft engine intake protector. Now, of course, when you talk about a military asset like the F-35, you'd want to kind of recover that thing pretty quickly, in all honesty, because it did plunge into international waters. The crash triggered a bit of a scramble to find this next-generation plane before it could be reached by foreign powers. Of course, there are a lot of people out there who would love to get the F-35 under their hands uh, to see what they could maybe reverse engineer or learn a little bit about it. And of course, the frantic underwater race to find the wreckage was completed at the end of 2021, about a mile below the surface, uh, just in case some other divers maybe got there first. They wanted to get it quickly, so they worked alongside the Americans to see if they could get a pretty prominent crew out there to pull it out. And the $100 million warplane was retrieved in a secret salvage operation carried out primarily by British, American, and some Italian crews to prevent only the radars of the weapon system being found. But there is an image, apparently, it's hard to determine whether or not it's verified, of the reclaimed F-35 on its deck of a, I guess, salvage boat that's been pretty widely shared online. Uh, and the wreckage has been taken to a naval base uh, that was, you know, basically there to secure it as it was taken away for scrapping, whatever else. Uh, as it's not been verified, it's hard to tell if it actually is the British one. Uh, but, I mean, the, the, the image doesn't really... <laughs> there's not much to go... Uh, away from here it looks like an f-35 has been pulled from the ocean there's not much more we can say on there um it is really interesting to know that the person who actually filmed the incident um of the uh crash was arrested um of course you know filming something like that is is not a good thing you know um when you have leaked footage of an incident like that being spread online it really doesn't bode well um it's very confidential material um, very sensitive material, really not good, um, and really, I would say, pissed off naval chiefs, and rightly so. I'd be, I, I have to agree. I mean, this isn't information that should be shared. You shouldn't be getting your phone out and videoing something like that. Um, if the pilot had died, you know, how do you feel? And it's just another sort of wake up call for us in being saying, you know, this isn't something that should be shared around the world. Uh, just something to think about those who are serving. You know, it's it's pretty scary stuff, but um, you know. The F-35, a lot of people say, well, the F-35's been plagued with problems. And, you know, uh, the fifth generation fighter is one of the most expensive weapons in the world. But, of course, when you create something so sophisticated like this, it's going to have issues. And I, I just find that when we have incidences like this where, you know, there's a crash and it fell off an aircraft carrier, it's all the jet's fault. Uh, it, no. <laughs> it, it's, really, it's really something you need to take a step back from sometimes and look at the facts. I mean, there's thousands of videos about this incident. But I thought for my community, I'd put it to bed a little bit and maybe give you a little bit of an update as to, you know, the findings that they had found. And they truly um, have, I think, determined that it is that flight cover that got sucked inside of there. Um, it's certainly not something that I think is ever going to happen again. But these things happen, right? They do happen. And it's a reminder for us all. No matter what we do, if you're a medic or you're a, you know, a driver or whatever else you do in your lives, just take that extra step to verify things, double check things, making sure yourself you're safe and others are safe it's nothing worse than seeing a hundred million pounds worth of jet going off the edge of a flight deck and realizing oops i forgot to take the cover off the intake uh, really not good at all so um that's it folks i just thought i'd share that today and sort of go over it a little bit more in depth and uh, just sort of a reminder for us all to be more diligent in our day to day let's protect each other and ourselves uh, from hazards of human factors. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave me a like and click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified of upcoming content in the future. Of course, you can also go check out my description box below for all my social media accounts, etc. And if you want to support my channel financially, either via Patreon or PayPal or being a sponsor, please again check out the description box. You can also go follow my sponsorship um, team, which is Attire for Effect. I'm working alongside them as a clothing business. Got some really cool artillery themed uh, clothing on there. If those of you are interested in that sort of stuff, you can go check them out. Really cool brand. And I hope to see you on the next video. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.